they go live like I am live now on the radio and I'm also live on my Facebook. Explain on that one. Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. Ah. So so what really happens is I'm going to have to give a warning for, you know, an expression for our listeners and viewers. Yeah. And I'm going to use a term, just a metaphor, don't take it physical. So I call this the nakedness. How do you see the businesses applying the social media into the environment? So Dr. Joe Isaac, welcome to the studio again. Thank you. Those who doesn't know you, who is Dr. Joe Isaac? Look, I'm not really a big fan of talking about myself. Uh, all my audience will know this, but I'll be very brief and short. I have a passion for helping people develop and bust through their obstacles. I want to see people on a different level than they were yesterday. This is pretty much what I'm all about. No question asked. You have credibility and authority in the field you are, and yet you're on a social media present daily. And uh, tell us, how do you see the businesses applying the social media into the environment? What do you think was the downfalls, was the good things, you know, using the social media? Look, this is a fantastic question, and for businesses to be using social media to grow, to be honest, here in Australia, for our people that are watching from Australia, the Australian market has always been a little bit behind in terms of adopting things that has already happened overseas. So let's talk about, you mentioned TikTok, all right? So mentioning TikTok, the Australian market has been very reluctant to use TikTok for their business growth for quite some time. And they were between the yay, nay, use it or not use it, security breaches, etc. until our prime minister, Scott Morrison said, we don't have any problems with it. And that's when the people started to think, oh, yeah, maybe. But it was already delayed. I wouldn't say late, but I would say delayed because TikTok give businesses organic reach and gives the people the idea of how the business actually run in a fun way. So if you are doing products, if you're doing manufacturing, you can take the camera there using TikTok with a lot of amazing effects that is very easy to use and you can start showing off your business and the people get to know oh my god i didn't know that this shop was just around the corner from my house because tiktok this is not something that a lot of people know tiktok works on geometrics a lot so you'll see people that are in your area according to your gps your location coming through on your for you page and this is something that not many people are aware of did you know this about tiktok because I, I believe TikTok, TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I haven't ventured into TikTok because yeah. not really knowing what what it's about. But I do have a question for you, you, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. How does a business break through to social media when social media is all about social? I always say, imagine yourself going to a barbecue with a group of friends, and then what would you think the natural behavior, the good behavior will be? You'll obviously go out there, grab a plate, you know, uh, have a bit of a chat as they're they're barbecuing whatever it is that they're barbecuing get to know about them they get to know about you and so on and so forth but what i'm seeing now in the social media that businesses are not doing this they're just out there posting something they don't know how to post properly they go and pay influencers or people that you know will post for them to shout out for them and they will waste so much money because they're not getting that social part they're not interacting with their people they go live like i am live now on the radio and I'm also live on my Facebook. Obviously, I'm not really talking to my Facebook group, but I'm kind of waving to them. It's part of engagement. If they're my audience are listening, I need to pay them that respect. So Being social, what are you actually demonstrating? Yeah, and that was going to be my next question. So if a business or even myself, yep. personal branding, those sorts of things, I want people to know about me. How, how, how do I do that rather than just waving at them like you say? But how do I yep. get the opportunity of these platforms to actually cut through? And that's my real question here yep. this afternoon. What is the cut through? Number one thing, and you know I'm all about practical tips. Number one thing on your videos, you have to delete the word I. That's number one. Mm, what do you think, Mario? Delete the word I from your vocabulary. That's number one. It's all about the you. I'm talking to you. See, if you're drifting, Darren, for instance, and I said, for example, you, Darren, I'm going to bring you back if you're drifting because you hear the word you, Darren, bam, you're back. That's number one thing I see that the people jump on the video and they like, I, 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 I. It works about the you. That's number one. And it's a very easy tip, yet not a lot of people master to use it all the time. Remember that one. Hey, Mario. Yeah? So number one thing is the word you. Number two 
is what you provide as a value, what we call USP, so unique selling point. Okay, I'm a baker, for instance. There is four or five bakery shops around my area. How do I stand out when they're all posting on social media? I was actually reading an article yesterday about Gary Vee, and he was saying that there's businesses that they go and get them and they pay him 350, etc. checks to come and present at their uh, events to boost their social media. And he's, he's saying that they could have got so many other people that are more focused on their niche that could add more value. The second point is you need to know who to connect with. But what does that really mean for you? It means that those people that are influencing the people and really educating them, what's influence? We need to understand that. I am not with the word influencers. I'm against that. Okay, but there's, there's nothing called an influencer in my vocabulary. I know it exists out there and people use it as an analogy. But as but a business, you're saying you want to be able to say, hey, you, first point, you. Yep. Um, I, oh, well, we, I don't know. What do you say next? As the business, you, you got their attention. Hey, you. How yep. do you then influence them? Not an influencer, but as a marketer. The other thing I talk about, and uh, on my account on TikTok, I'm, I'm relatively on you new on TikTok, I have like 122,000. What I see on TikTok, and I just want to answer your question with a story, that influence, that impact. Okay, I see people coming to me, their accounts at 1 million, half a million, they're bigger than my account. And they're coming to me, following me and DMing me in private, asking me questions and so on and so forth. So you would think if you're looking at the numbers, okay, well, they are much larger. Why are they talking to this guy? because they see me as the as mario said the authority yes i might have little following compared to them but i'm the authority how does that actually work that works from the way you project your message so when i project my message i create a trend but what i really do is i tell the people i started the trend of how to detect lies which was not on TikTok, according to me, I've never seen it on TikTok. Now I see a lot of people talking about how to detect lies because I started that. So how do you create the influence? The summary of that story to really highlight the point is influence is all about education and education gets the trust. So when you have someone that is educating, that is qualified, that constantly and consistently educating the people, that builds the trust. And that trust is the influence. So back to the baker. How does the baker do that to have themselves stand out different from yep. the four other bakers? All right. So for the baker to demonstrate that, they have to build that trust. How do they build that trust? They need to educate the people. How do they educate the people? They tell them, okay, this bread is good because of that. The bad thing about it, it's like a complete 360 honest review of that piece of bread, for example. When they do that, they say, all right, if you are trying to lose weight, then this type of bread is not going to be suitable, but this type of bread will be because blah, 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 blah. So they're actually educating the people and tagging their pain points and finding solutions for them. Now, when you are doing this, you're not saying, oh, here is my bread. It's one dollar. I have a special. Everybody's doing this. You're not standing out because everybody's doing the same. But when you are approaching it and saying, hey, if you are a health freak, this is the direction. If you are a kind of guy that is not observing, then this is the direction. If you want to indulge because Christmas is coming, this is the direction and this is the why and this is the how. You build the education and you build the influence. And this is exactly how it works. Well, Dr. Joe, that was a very, very, very interesting conversation. We're going to continue after the break. You're listening to Lion 90.5. Break. Business Insights with a... Uh, yeah, break. Eh? Okay. All right. Can we have a break? Uh, you're allowed. Yeah, okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you're listening to Live 90.5 Business Insights with Darren and Mario. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with more questions for Dr. Joe Isaac. Thank you for tuning in.